How in the world can one person take on the task of changing the world? If all it takes is one person to instigate self-destruction, can it not also be one person who inspires self-renewal? The human race now yearns to renew itself. You can sense this everywhere. You can feel it in the air. All that people are waiting for is someone to stand up and show the way. Someone to get the ball rolling. One person to topple the first domino. Yet let me make something clear. The era of the single savior is over. What is needed now is joint action, combined effort, collective co-creation. What is called for now is not one person only, but a large number of humans willing to be the one person in their family, in their community, in their circle of influence who will take on the task of bringing about change right then, right there. In this context, one person can make a huge difference, for it is always one person within a group or cluster who calls forth the highest vision, who models the grandest truth, who inspires and cajoles and agitates and awakens and ultimately produces a contextual field within which collective action is rendered possible and becomes inevitable. Are you that one person? Do you choose to be an inspiration for all those whose lives you touch? That is the question your soul asks you now. However many of us may take up the call, we will still need your help. We need God's help. Yet we cannot move forward if you believe that I am a confused God? Who believes that? Most of the human race, judging by its actions. Its codes of conduct are remarkably different from culture to culture, yet all are declared to be based on the word and law of God. If they all are. God must be terribly confused. Of course, we would not say that it is God who is confused. We would say that it is humans who are confused. Yes. And if they would all just pay attention to your code of conduct, they would no longer be confused. Exactly. That's right. Yet, if God is the all-powerful, why does he not simply make it clear which code of conduct is the correct code of conduct? Why does he not simply resolve the matter? That's exactly what he's doing. He is. Do you not know that the end days are near? Do you not see that the final victory is at hand? Do you not observe the fruits of the struggle, the glorious outcome of the jihad? You mean the maiming and killing of thousands of people in my name? I mean the elimination of the traitorous infidels. I mean the cleansing of human society. You must purge the evil from among you, says the Bible. Fight them until there is no more conflict, and all faith goes to God, the Koran instructs. To protect men of virtue and destroy men who do evil, to set the standard of sacred duty, I appear in age after age, the Bhagavad Gita informs us. So you see, this is the right and proper work of God's people. Do you really believe that? Nope. <laughs> Why are you saying it? I just want to be fair. Give a voice to those who do believe it. It is just such beliefs that have caused the havoc in the world that religious wars have produced. Do you see that? Of course I do. Most people do. The problem is we don't know what to do about it. We don't know how to help those who are caught up in those beliefs to break the spell. You can help them by telling them that you can understand how they could feel that way, that you recognize these are their beliefs, and that you would like to engage in a dialogue with them about those beliefs to see if there is more about them and about other beliefs in the world for you both to learn. But what if what they're doing, the, the way they're acting, is causing you damage or harm? What if their beliefs are making them do things to you that are horrible? Even people who do horrible things will stop doing them, if only for a moment, if you will ask them why they are doing them. It is not the basic nature of human beings to be horrible. It is the basic nature of human beings to be loving. When humans are being horrible, it is because of something they believe. Ask them, therefore, even in the midst of the horror, ask them, what hurts you so much that you feel you have to hurt me to heal it?